Hello girls, gays, and non-binary babes. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I have a very long-awaited video by me. Um, I've been long awaiting making this. I don't think any of you really care about this subject, but this is something that I am very much into. I love talking about cryptids and reading about them. So as you can read from the title, we're talking about cryptids in horror today, and I absolutely cannot wait to dive into these books. I have a handful here next to me, and I just can't wait to share them. So uh, yeah, let's just jump right on into it. The first book I have here is pretty popular, mainstream, it's more mainstream, um, and that is Devolution by Max Brooks. This is a Bigfoot story. So this is a file of an account and it, basically it's a file of events that took place on or near Mount Rainier. Um, it says it is a first-hand account of the Rainier Sasquatch Massacre. So yes, I freaking loved this when I read it. I actually listened to the audiobook and that was really really good. I do recommend that. But this is just phenomenal. It is so hard to find a Bigfoot book that doesn't make it seem cheesy or like really immature or something. I don't really know how to explain it, but just sometimes it just feels like, oh, Bigfoot, you know, whatever. But this like, it feels like scary and real and I loved it. Um, Max Brooks is the author of World War Z as well. So I'm highly waiting this movie. <laughs> Can't wait. But um, yeah, that's why I said it's more mainstream, just because more people know the author. I don't really know how many people have read this actual book, but I really loved it and I highly recommend it if you're into Bigfoot. Next up, we have the mermaid category. For this category, I have one book and that is Into the Drowning Deep by Mira Grant. So this is kind of a sci-fi horror book and it takes place on a boat and this boat is going out into the ocean near the Mariana Trench and they are trying to find out what happened to a previous expedition that went out to make a mockumentary on mermaids and everybody on that boat, the original boat, disappeared, never heard from again. So there's a second expedition going out to figure out what happens. And there's killer mermaids. Surprise, surprise. Um, so yeah, if you're into mermaids, but more the cryptid version and not the fairy tale version, then I would suggest this one. It's really gory and really dark and creepy. And I just love the science-y kind of aspect behind it. It makes it feel more real and more plausible, I guess. Um, so yeah, really love this one. It's incredible. So the next four books that I have are all, they're all cryptids stemming from indigenous stories and legends, um, whether that be not to deer or flesh walkers, things of that nature, things similar to that, but not quite. Um, let's talk about them. I'm excited. This is probably my favorite category because um, three of these four books are actually written by indigenous authors and so there's a, just a bit more of a, like a richness to them because there's that culture that it stems from and I really love that aspect. So the first book I have is Moon of the Crested Snow by Wobgeshig Rice. This is following kind of it's like a more quiet horror and this is a story of a not deer and it takes place in an apocalypse sort of situation where kind of the whole world goes to hell but um the natives living on this reservation um kind of already know how to fend for themselves so they're just kind of figuring out how to go about life now that um, society has collapsed. And it takes place in Canada, so you know, very cold, snow everywhere, all that good stuff. And it's really good, and it's really like low-key horror. So if you're easily scared or want something more relaxed, then maybe try this one. 
the next one I have to share, I guess technically might not be one of these sorts of cryptids, but it's close enough and I love this book so much that I want to include it anyway. Um, and that is The Only Good Indians by Stephen Graham Jones. This is another pretty popular one. So this one follows a group of men who went on this hunting trip and they kind of witnessed something, they did something that is now haunting them later in life. And it's kind of, it technically it would be like a deer, not deer situation. Um, but I just don't know if it's like technically that. But it does, you know, stem from native culture. And I really, really love that. It's so creepy. It's so gory. One of my favorite horror books of all time. If you haven't read this yet, you need to read it, especially if you like cryptids. The next one I have is not written by an indigenous author, but um, I think it does pay a lot of respect to indigenous people and their culture and like where this creature stems from. Um, but anyway, that is Stolen Tongues by Felix Blackwell. This actually originated on Reddit under the No Sleep um, subreddit. And that's kind of why I picked it up because I knew it was going to be scary. This in here is not quite a flesh walker. It is very similar to a flesh walker and I really like this. So basically this story is about a guy whose fiance talks in her sleep and like sleepwalks and all that stuff and they're kind of haunted by this thing. There's this thing in like the woods near where they're staying and he realizes that his fiance is talking to it in her sleep. So yeah, great story. Really like this one and uh, yeah, very good. The final book is actually not a fleshwalker, not deer situation. It is something different. I don't know why I put it in that category. So that's that's the end of that category. Now we have Empire of Wild by Sherry Dimmeline. And this is the story of the Rogaru, or it's a story including a Rogaru, which is sort of a werewolf-like creature and it stems from Canadian indigenous legends and I freaking love this. It's so incredible. It gave me Salem's Lot vibes, kind of like um, small town preacher, weird things happening. Yeah, and the Rogaru is so freaking creepy. It's like, it's almost like a not deer mixed with a werewolf. It's just so creepy and I hated it but loved it at the same time, you know? And this is just so incredible. So this is about, um, I haven't read this in a while. Oh, right, okay. So this woman is searching for her missing husband and he's been missing for almost a year. They had a really big argument and then he just vanished. And then she finds him again in um, a, what is it? a revival tent in a parking lot and it's his same it's you know same voice looks the same um but he doesn't know who she is he doesn't recognize her at all so she finds her missing husband and he's like who the fuck are you so really good really like this one absolutely incredible highly recommend the final two books i have are nonfiction, technically not horror but i wanted to throw them in anyway for my fellow cryptid fans so First one I will briefly mention, The Mothman Prophecies. This is a classic, everybody knows about this, but had to include it. Um, does this talk a lot about Mothman? No. It talks more about aliens and kind of that thing, but it is the origin of Mothman, so it is interesting in that aspect. So yeah, this is the true story of what happened in West Virginia and everything that went down. There's a movie for it. Not a huge fan of the movie. Big fan of the book though. Very good. Very creepy, especially knowing that it is a true account. So yeah. And then we also have Hunt for the Fleshwalker by Colm A. Kelleher and George Knapp. This is one of the scariest books I've ever read. One, because it's nonfiction, so you know it's a true account. And two, because of everything that happens in this book. This is an account of what happens at um, 
what? Oh, it's known as Fleshwalker Ranch. There's a different name for it. Um, but you get the gist. It is a ranch in Utah that is the most haunted and paranormal things happening place in like the whole country. And it is so scary. There's creatures, there's aliens, there's hauntings, there's anything you can imagine it has happened here. And it's crazy. And this scared me so bad, but it's so good. And um, there is a movie for this, like a documentary, but I really prefer the book. I think it really um, kind of, you can see everything fleshed out a bit, a bit more um, in the book rather than, you know, having to briefly hear about it in the movie. But yeah, highly recommend this one, especially if you don't know about this ranch because oh boy, you're in for a surprise. <laughs> so that is my little book recommendation video for you guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed. I hope more than two people watch this. Um, but yeah, thank you so, so much for watching. Please, please leave any recommendations you have for me below. I would, I am dying for more cryptid books. So yes, please leave them below. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.